Today, the home price head fake. Hello again, this is Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and property news. Well, CoreLogic has just released their home value index and they are saying that it surged the strongest since November 2021. And they said CoreLogic's National Home Value Index recorded a third consecutive monthly rise with the pace of growth accelerating sharply to 1.2% in May. After finding a floor in February, home values increased 0.6% and 0.5% through March and April. Sydney continues to lead the trend, posting a 1.8% lift in value over the month, recording the city's highest monthly gain since September 2021. And since moving through a trough in January, home values have risen by 4.8% or the equivalent of about $48,000 in the median dwelling value. Brisbane was at 1.4% and Perth 1.3% and they were the only other capitals to record a monthly gain of more than 1%. However, the rise in values was broad-based with the rate of growth accelerating across every capital city last month, they said. CoreLogic's research director Tim Lawless noted the positive trend as a symptom of the persistently low levels of available housing supply running up against rising housing demand. Advertised listings trended lower through May, with roughly 1,800 fewer capital city homes advertised for sale relative to the end of April. Inventory levels are around 15.3% lower than they were the same time last year and 24.4% below the previous five-year average for this time of year, he said. With such a short supply of available housing stock, buyers are becoming more competitive And there's an element of FOMO, fear of missing out, creeping into the market. Amid increased competition, auction clearance rates have trended higher, holding at 70% or above over the past three weeks. P.S. on very low volumes, of course. For private tree sales, homes are selling faster and with less vendor discounting. And he went on to say that the trend in regional housing values has also picked up, with the combined regional index rising half a percent in May, following a 0.2% and 0.1% rise in March and April. Although regional home values are trending higher, the rate of gain hasn't kept pace with the capitals. Over the past three months, growth in the combined capitals index was more than triple the pace of growth seen across the combined regions at 2.8% and 0.8% respectively. Although advertised housing supply remains tight across regional Australia, demand from net overseas migration is less substantial. And the ABS data points to around 50% of Australia's net overseas migration being centred on the regions each year. Additionally, a slowdown in internal migration rates across the regions have helped to ease the demand side pressure on housing. The truth is that premium housing markets in Sydney continues to lead the recovery trend. After recording a large drop in values, Sydney's upper quartile, the most expensive quarter, stands out with the highest rate of growth around 5.6% of the past three months compared with a 2.6% rise in the more affordable lower quartile values. Buyers targeting the premium sector of the market are still buying at well below peak prices. And of course, many of them don't need a mortgage because they've already got cash. Although values across more expensive homes are rising more rapidly at the end of May, dwelling values across Sydney's upper quartile remains 11.8% below the January 2022 peak. This is equivalent to a saving of around $213,000 from the cyclical high. Despite the recent gains, most housing markets are still recording housing values that are well below recent peaks. In fact, Perth is the only capital city where dwelling values have returned to record highs. Hobart values remain the lowest relative to the city's recent cyclical peak in May last year, down 12.6%. And Sydney home values are still around 9.6% below the January 2022 peak. Brisbane values are down 9.4%. And Melbourne is about down 8.2%. The number of homes advertised for sale fell further in May. The flow of fresh listings was down around 13.1% below the previous five-year average across the combined capitals and down 18% across 
the combined regional areas of Australia. Every capital city apart from Darwin and Canberra is recording a new listing trend that is well below the previous five-year average and total listings are also trending lower as bar demand outstrips the flow of new stock on the market. Estimated home sales have shown some subtle upward movements with the number of capital city dwelling sales rising over the past three months to the highest level since July last year. And while capital city home sales are well below the recent high recorded in late 21, they're roughly in line with the previous five-year average, with transactions outstripping new listings in the past three months, Lawless said. At the national level, we've seen an average of 35,143 new listings added to the market over the past three months. Over the same time, we've seen an average of 39,760 dwelling sales. This disconnect between available supply and housing demand is a central factor, placing renewed upward pressure on housing values. The last time capital city value stock levels were this low at this time of year was back in 2007. And by the way, that was also a period of rapid overseas migration and rising housing values. With selling conditions improving, we could see more homeowners test the market. He said, the value of new listings is normally subdued through the winter months before turning higher into spring. And it'll be interesting to see if more vendors take advantage of the improved housing market conditions and look to beat the spring rush when competition to sell could be more intense. A lift in advertised supply remains a key risk, of course, with stock levels well below average currently. A rise in available supply would help to rebalance buyers and sellers negotiating power. And while there's no evidence of a trend towards higher advertised stock levels, it will be important to monitor this trend, especially leading into spring. And the national rent index increased to further 0.8% in May. That's well above the pre-COVID decade average. We saw rents rise at about 0.2% month on month. But the figures represented a modest slowdown relative to recent monthly highs of 1% in March and 0.9% in April. The reduction in rental growth is most evident across the regional markets where rents rose 0.3% higher on the month, while capital city rents increased 1%. Similarly, monthly growth in capital city house rents, up 0.9%, have eased more visibly than units, which is 1.4%. Whilst the pace of rental growth looks to have slowed a little, rents are generally still rising. And across the capitals, there are a few exceptions, with rents in Darwin and Canberra reducing over the rolling quarter by 0.2 and 0.7%, respectively. At the other end of the spectrum, the larger capital city unit markets are driving rents higher at a blistering speed. City unit rents are up 5.7% over the past three months. Melbourne and Perth unit rents rose 5.2% and in Brisbane unit rents have increased by 3.8%. And Lawless said that unit markets are likely to be experiencing higher rental growth for a number of reasons. Capital city unit rents are around 9.5% cheaper than house rents. Although a year ago, the gap was 14.8%. And there is also the additional demand for higher density styles of rental accommodation linked to the return of foreign students and overseas migrants with regions popular with recent migrant arrivals tending to be high density. Finally, rental demand in inner city precincts may be seeing an increase in popularity as workers return to the office and CBDs become more vibrant, he said. While rental demand remains high, we aren't seeing much sign of a supply response. Regional capital city listings are down around 36.4% below for the previous five-year average to the end of May, and vacancy rates are holding at around 1% for both houses and units. One early sign of increased investor participation in the market was seen in the ABS housing finance data through to March, where the number of new investment housing loans secured jumped from a record low of 11,500 in January to around 15,300 in March, though so investment loans were still down 29.4% year over year. And rental yields have firmed after recording a solid upward trajectory through the downturn, and with housing values once again rising, gross rental yields look to have stabilised below the pre-COVID decade average of 4.2% nationally. So they conclude that with housing values moving through a third month of growth, it's clear the market has moved past a short but sharp downturn. The outlook for housing, though, remains largely a question of the trajectory of interest rates. Economists are divided on the cash rate outlook, highlighting the sheer uncertainty about whether we have moved through a peak in the cash rate or not. 
even if the rate hiking cycle is over. The timing of interest rate cuts will also be uncertain. And once interest rates do start to reduce, we could see more sustained momentum gather in housing markets. So it does seem to me that the strong May gain might suggest the prospect that markets are doing more than just stabilising. But thin turnover suggests the lift in prices may be difficult to sustain. And more generally, the interest rate backdrop remains a headwind and is unlikely to become supportive for some time yet. And while population and other factors are driving a shift, a fully fledged upswing in property prices is not expected to gain much traction until maybe 2024 or 2025. And I'd also make the point that, of course, interest rate rises are continuing to bite with the mortgage cliff running. And the cash flow pressures on households continue to build, which means that more are going to get into difficulty later. So to my mind, this is a bit of a head fake. I don't think there's enough evidence yet to suggest that we are through the worst of the property price corrections. And in fact, it could be a situation where people are buying in just at the point where prices are about to go weaker again. And of course, if a recession bites and if unemployment rises, then all bets are off in terms of price rises. Then it becomes a question of how far prices may fall. Now, if you're buying your home in Sydney's contentious market, you don't need to stand alone. This is the time you need to have Edwin Almeida from Ribbon Property Consultants standing alongside you. Buying a property is both challenging and adversarial. The vendor has a professional on their side. Emotions run high. Price discovery and price transparency are hard to find. And then there's the wasted time and financial investments that you make. Edwin understands your needs, so why not engage a licensed professional to stand alongside you? With RPC, you know you have experience knowledge and master negotiators looking after your best interests. So shoot Ribbon an email at info at ribbonproperty.com.au and if you use the promo code DFAWTW slash Martin, you can get a 10% discount offer. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.